Uh, I think uh, it, it's not even just about that you have to be careful about what you say because society is one way. I, I honestly think that a, a good chunk of society itself isn't really that interested in these sort of things. However, there are enough people, even if it be a minority, that they create all their sense of meaningfulness and purpose in life. Like their their entire ethical structure is built around creating boogeymen and slaying them in ways that they think is, I mean, it's like there, but the only thing that allows them to even have any kind of a lever of power is that there are others like themselves and a lot of them are embedded into corporate culture. So these corporations will then turn away from you or journalism, especially what passes for journalism. So they use these, these kind of, uh, what would you do this, this, uh, Ouroboros that just keeps eating its own tail mm. to distill this cycle of fear to effectively paint people as, you know, untouchable or, you know, put, put the, uh, uh, what was it? The, the red letter or the scarlet letter on them and to make them, you know, you, you got to stay away for things that are the most tepid, right. Where, you know, and usually over time you'll see like, oh yeah, activists busted for, you know, having child porn on their computer mm. or, you know, for, for rape or something, you know, it's just like, well, your morality isn't based upon how many people you have uh, said are problematic online and how many hashtag um, uh, movements you've, you know, you, you've tweeted about. That really isn't about your, that's, that's performative. You know, right? Um, it's it's the it's the people that do charity, but only when the camera's on, mm. right? You know, I've got plenty of instances in my life where I've stuck my neck out for other people, those that I don't know and will never see again. But I don't have to, I don't have to tweet about it or post about it or write a book about how look at me how virtuous I am. You know, at the end mm. of the day, I remember as a young age. The people that banged on about their religiosity were always the ones that I felt were like the most false or came off as the most false. Whereas the people that just imbued and exuded those, whatever that sentiment was, I, they were, they came on, they always seemed like, well, that's the real deal right there. Like mm -hmm. if a thing really is what it says it is, what it purports itself to be, it will be that authentically through in and throughout. It will not have to advertise it. It will not have to tell you because it will be apparent. Right. It's, I think definitely it is the the major, minority uh, of people that point fingers, trying to cancel people, but their voices are so loud because they're the people mm -hmm. commenting on YouTube videos. They're mm -hmm. the people retweeting, retweeting all the hate. The people who yeah. don't care about all this shit, they don't comment on YouTube videos. They just, you know, yes. just leave us alone. <laughs> That's true. And um, not only are they the loudest, but they're part of the reason why they're the loudest because their fingers on the button nonstop. You need to understand that when a person sees, uh, there's a few things. There's like, um, there was a quote by C.S. Lewis about, um, he doesn't really worry about the, the thief or the robber because you know what they're going to do. Or, or was it the, the tyrant, uh, something like that? Like he, you know, he's going to do something because he's evil, right? Or because he has ill intent. But the person that believes that whatever, who's ever, whose actions are, they believe rooted in good will, is the most dangerous because if that person, let's say, believes that they're on a moral crusade and that means in fact that even mistakenly so they will never stop and they will mm -hmm. never quit because to them there is they're in the they're on the right side of history let's go to say and so therefore there is no limit to where they'll go no limit to where to what they'll do and no interest in ever stopping and i'd also like to add to that sentiment that people like that it becomes their locus of of being in the world and they, regardless of whether or not they're religious in any typical fashion, they are religious people. Uh, they treat their 
their social media crusades as just as such as when um, the Templars and, and, and everyone marched into uh, Jerusalem. Like it, it is the same for them. It's the same for when uh, the Ottoman Empire moved across uh, the Middle East and into Eastern Europe. It, it, there is no difference. They are just as zealously religious as anyone else. Mm. Do you think this will ever change? Because, you know, historically, um, this might not have happened on the Internet, but these are the same people that joined the mob to burn witches on the fire. Mm. Do you think this will always happen? No, this will never change because we're, but the thing is, I think what we're seeing is the, we're seeing humanity as it always has been exacerbated by technology, right? Without technology, the ability for us to even have these conversations, be they good or bad, wouldn't exist. The, the reach of you, a, being able to contact me in the first place for us to sit here wouldn't be there, but also that reach into other people's lives in a way that cannot actually be vetted in a personal sense, let's say with Instagram or any kind of social media, didn't exist. So now you have all these natural processes in the way humans think, feel, empathize, sympathize, and so on and so forth. Now you have these, essentially these simulacra of real people and real lives pounding at the doorsteps of your being every single day. And your body doesn't necessarily know how to differentiate between that which is real and that which is not, especially when social media in all sense and purposes appears in it to be real, to yeah. be a real person. Uh, telling you about their life in language that you comprehend, in uh, grammar, forms, and function that you comprehend, you know? So, so when, in any case, was humanity ready for something like that? It, it isn't. And Heidegger talks about this a lot with the way he approaches technology, and so does Oswald Spengler. 